Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. This is the self-driving car series using Jetson Nano. In this video, we are going to use an RC transmitter and receiver to control our self-driving car. We will use it along with the motor function. So let's get started. So in the previous video, we actually tried out our uh, new motor control function and it worked well. It was going forward, backwards, left and right, but we have to see it in an actual example. So to test it out, we are going to use this RF controller. So we will use this along with its receiver. So this is the transmitter and this is the receiver. We are going to connect this receiver to our Arduino board and using this we are going to uh, receive the signals from this remote control and we have two different channels. So this is capable of doing four different channels but we have only two which is basically our speed and then we have our uh, turn. So we will use that to run the robot. Now in terms of wiring, it's fairly simple. We are going to connect. We have uh, the positive and negative because this is an active component. We need positive and negative, which will be our five volts and ground. And then we need just two pins for our signals. So we will connect it to pin number 14 and 15. So let me show you how this will be done. So here, let me check the colors first. Okay, now you can see that we have done the connections and uh, by the way, this is a fairly common device. It's uh, nothing specific. You can buy any RF controller and it will come with this receiver and the transmitter and you can connect it like this. So uh, again, I have just connected the pins, the positive and the negative and then the two pins for our uh, what do you call the signals of our two channels now the thing is I'm not going to attach this permanent this is just for testing purpose so I will not attach it anywhere I will just place it here in the middle so that it doesn't interfere with anything else but uh, later on we are going to remove this so I will not fix it for now so let's get to our code and see how we can program this so here we are in the Arduino environment and we have the code from our previous video where we wrote the motor function and you can see that we declared the pins, we added the variables for the speed, we set up all of them as output, then we wrote the function for moving our robot and at the end we just tested out a few of these commands. Now we will copy all of this and we will paste it over here because at the end of the day, we will be using the same function, move robot, to actually move the robot, but we will add our own uh, little function, um, which will be to get the values from our receiver rather than writing it manually. So what we will do is, first of all, we will write here a new function, and we will call this get rf commands. So you can name it anything you want. We are just writing it, get RF commands. So how the RF uh, receiver works is that it receives the signal from our transmitter, which is basically the signal of high. Now, what it does is it calculates the difference between these high signals. And that difference is given in terms of time. And to be more specific, it's in microseconds. So what we have to do is we have to find this duration between our pulses. So what we have to do is we have to write here that our duration speed is equals to, so this is for channel number one or two, uh, one of the channels. So this will be pulse in. So this is built in in uh, Arduino. So we can write here that we will use our speed pin so this will be pin number 14 or 15 based on where you plugged in your uh, channel. Then we are going to write, we want to check the high signal. And the same thing we will do for direction to move left and right. And we will write here that this will be direction. 
and this will be direction pin so what we have to do is we have to declare these so we can write here integer is it integer no it's let's put it long unsigned long uh, duration speed and then we will also put our direction as the same so let's copy this and we will put it here and then we will have to write uh, what do you call the integer of our uh, speed pin speed pin uh, it is in my case it is 14 and then integer of our direction pin which will be uh, 15 now we we don't want to write it inside here I'm just writing it because it's just next to it we have to write it at the very beginning over here so let's go back there you go and uh, what else do we need okay so let's print out the values that we are getting from here so what we can do is we can simply write our print command so we will write serial dot print ln which means new line and then we will write duration speed right and then we can add uh, what do you call a space and then we can add the other one so here we can write or let's let's put a dot in between dot and then here we will print out our direction okay and uh, what else I think that should be fine and we don't want ln over here or here we just need at the very end so if we run this now and we have to save it so let's say rf uh, let's say Jetson robots okay so let's see what we have here oh yeah we have to call the function I forgot so we have to copy this and we will go down and instead of all of this we will remove that and we will put just our call and of course the semicolon okay and then we can see okay so now it's working let's turn it on and see so here is our transmitter and if I rotate you can see the value changes for the turn and if I press this for the acceleration you can see it changes as well so you can see if i go up it will give me a certain value if i go down it will give me a certain value so mostly these values they range between uh, 1000 and 2000 so usually they have this uh, controller which uh, had has these adjusting knobs you can turn them around to adjust uh, precisely the values so even if your robot is not exactly at the correct position you can rotate these and this will allow you to adjust the value properly so we can see that now it is working properly what we have to do now is we have to convert these values between minus one and one so as we have discussed before all of the values that we will be sharing between each other um, uh, with the different codes we will convert them into minus one to one so let's see how we can do that so we will go back to our RF commands and over here as soon as we get our values we are going to declare something uh, let's declare a variable remote speed let's say is equals to we are going to say that map our duration speed we want to map this duration speed uh, between certain limits so let's say we can put 1000 to 2000 these are the values that we will be getting we want it between minus 1 and 1 so this is what we want to do now two things we can do here to improve our uh, code one is to use this in the beginning so that the user can change it but uh, we don't really need to change it in this case but maybe somebody needs to change it so we can write here RF limits 
and we can write this as an array so we can put four values inside of this and we can write here that we have 1000 then 2000 and then 1000 and then 2000 so we have two channels so this will be the minimum of first channel maximum of the first channel minimum of second channel maximum of the second channel so we can call this here so we can say rf limits so where did it go okay here so rf limits instead of this we can put zero and then instead of this we can put one now the thing with uh, the map function is that it does not uh, accept uh, float values so decimal values so it cannot give us a range between minus one and one it will just give mi minus one or one so what we have to do is we, ha we will write it as minus 100 and 100 and once we get the value we will just divide it by 100 so that will give us our value and uh, yeah now we have to divide it by 0 0.0 because then it will think that this is a float value rather than an integer so the same thing we have to do for uh, our direction so let's copy this again if you are facing issues with uh, what do you call the limits you can change it over here sometimes it's not that great so you might want to adjust that so for the direction we are going to say the same thing and instead of speed we will put direction over here and we will take the limit of 2 and we will take it as 3 so again we have the same thing and then we want to constrain it again because uh, let's say that our value is above minus 1 then it is uh, not useful for us it is out of range so we have to make sure because sometimes the signal is bad so we will write here that our remote speed is equals to constrain and we are going to write here remote speed and we need to constrain between minus 1.0 and 1 1.0 so this can accept uh, what you call decimal values so we don't have to worry so the same thing we will do for our direction and we will write it here so this and this and again we have to put the semicolon when you are coming from Python it's sometimes you know when you're switching it's uh, hard to put the semicolon anyways so this should be good and now instead of the remotes uh, instead of the duration now what we can do is we can print out our speed and we can print out our direction so these values should be between 1 and minus 1 so let's see how that works out uh, remote speed was not declared we did not declare this really okay so we have to go up here and we have to declare so here we can say integer oh actually our float float we will write remote speed and then we will write remote direction okay so now if we run this and I forgot a semicolon somewhere over here so if I move it again now you can see the values are ranging from minus 1 to 1 now even if it doesn't go all the way to 1 it's fine again you can fine-tune it and let's see this one yeah one and uh, of course for the reverse it will not go to minus one uh, this remote is programmed like this it doesn't have that flexibility but uh, again for example now uh, in the middle it should be zero right so for our throttle it's pretty much close to zero but for our turn it's not at zero so what we can do is we can adjust these uh, knobs until we get the correct value so you can see now I have adjusted it and now we are very close to zero so if I rotate now it's at one and then if I go back it is at minus one this is how you can fine-tune your values okay so now all we have to do is we have to send this value to our move robot command so that it can move our robot so here we will send so first we are receiving the values 
from our uh, rf command function and then we are sending it here so what do we have to send we have to send what is the name of it it is uh, remote speed and remote direction so these are the two things that we have to send so we will write here remote speed and we will write here remote direction and instead of 2000 we are just going to put 50 so now we can send it and see how it works so now if i turn it on you can see that the motors they start moving even though i haven't actually i'm not pressing any buttons but still it's moving so if i move it now this is the left and right and this is the forward and the backwards but you can see that even at the zero position there is a little bit of movement so we can fine-tune it as you can see now I'm fine-tuning it so now you can see that it's at almost as a, at a stall but because these motors are very precise they still pick up the signal and you can hear the noise so to avoid this what we will do is we will add a condition so that uh, there is a dead zone where it will think that it is at zero so to add this dead zone condition we are going to write if our remote speed is less than 0 0.1 and the remote speed is greater than 0 0.1 uh, minus 0 0.1 then this means that it is the dead zone so if it's below 0 0.1 or greater than minus 0 0.1 then we should be giving it a value of zero it should not move so here we will write remote speed is equals to zero so the same way we are going to copy this and we will paste it here and instead of speed of the remote we are going to write direction so this way we will not get that noise where the motors are trying to move and of course we can remove this so I think that should be enough so let's run this and see what happens so here we are with the robot now and what you can see is that if I turn this on you will not hear any noise so the motors are not trying to uh, move because they are getting the value of zero. So if I move it now, if I run it, you can see it goes forward. Then if, it, if I push it, it goes backward as well. Now, uh, if we wanted to check the turn, we can rotate it as well. You can see it's rotating and then we can rotate on the other side as well. and the the movement is quite smooth so one more thing if you are actually getting opposite values for example if i'm pushing down and it's not going forward it's going backwards then i can reverse that in the software part so the easy way to do this is uh, instead of sending the positive value just multiply it by minus one before you send it to the move robot command the same thing goes for the direction and the speed so the variable remote speed and the remote direction you can multiply it by minus one before you send it to your uh, robot so i think this is pretty good So this is it for today's video. I hope you have learned something new. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one.